So once you get everything clean, starting from scratch, you're supposed to take the output shaft and put that in the transmission all by itself. And then you put the case on. I'm not going to do all this, I'm just showing you what you're supposed to do. So there you go. Line all the dowels up. You draw it in flat, I'll use all the bolts, whatever, torque it. Then you take the race, tap that in, not all the way down, but you know, just so it's in. Then there's this, this is the shim, they make different thicknesses. This is how you preload the output shaft so the bearings have the right load. So you put whatever shim in there and you got to put this in, you know, you tap it down until you can start the bolts, draw this down. So there's the case is down, that's down. So it's just the, the output shaft. Then you'd put it's a, like a ratchet this size. I'll show a picture of it. You put it on. With the, with the new nut or whatever, you know. And it's how many inch pounds it takes. Like it will stay still. And it will be a, an analog gauge. And it will stay. You put pressure, pressure. And you watch the gauge will go up. It will be like two inch pounds, four inch pounds, five, six, seven, all of a sudden it will break free and spin. So you need to know how many inch pounds of torque it takes to break the shaft feet free. And if it's too, you know, the Toyota has a spec. And if it's too little, you gotta use a thicker shim. If it's too much, you gotta use a thinner shim. But I've already taken my shafts apart and put them back together with different, all different gears and stuff and ended up being the exact same shim. Then I just took it apart again, used a different input shaft and everything. And, well the input's not even part of this, but, so yeah, it's, it ended up being the same. It's just switching that second gear. So I've come to think, I'm not saying, you may just double check, but I've come to think that this shim is more just adjusting the machining of the case versus your actual shaft. Thinking your shaft's always gonna be pretty much the same. And this is just adjusting the case machining. Because I have never had to switch it. So after you do this, you gotta take it all apart. And you know, new bearings are different than old bearings. It's all in the manual. A new bearing takes more inch pounds because it's not broken than an old bearing. So let's just say that was eight inch pounds. So you're supposed to take it apart, again like this. Then, you gotta put in the differential unit. Okay. And then you put in the output shaft next to it. Okay, so you know that, let's just say this was eight inch pounds to move. I don't know what the spec is, but just making that up. So now, there's, I can't remember which side it's, oh here, it's on the case side. There's a shim that does the same thing essentially as this shim to the diff bearings. So now you're supposed to go put the case on, wrong side, torque it all down, put this shim and all that back in. Torque this down, this plate again. And now the diff is supposed to add, say, an additional four inch pounds. So this is eight, and you need four for a used bearing. So you want, I'm just making this up, I don't know what the actual things are. I'll, I'll, I'll post a picture of what it actually is in a second, but. But 
you know, then you do the same thing where you got to add them together. So you know you got eight. The diff's supposed to have four, so you're hoping for like, or it has a range, you know. So you're hoping for like 15 or something with the diff, and then you need to shim the diff accordingly. So now once you have all that, that's like the biggest pain I should, you know, out of everything. So once you have all that shimmed and cleaned out, you're ready to start assembly. Come on, move that in a second. So let me pull this out.